All right, hi internet. Welcome back to the Turing tests. A Squeenix production. Did you pass? I didn't. Uh, I think I did. I'm pretty sure. What condition should I expect to find the ground crew in? Daniel went missing days ago. Chris is presumed dead. We are expecting to find Sarah, Mikhail, and Sochi in a stable condition. Chris is dead? He was involved in an accident. Uh, very cryptic, Tom. <laughs> huh. I'm sure... I'm sure your algorithms told you that's all we needed or wanted to know. <laughs> yes, he had an accident. Presumably. What, what happened? He was investigating things. Events and circumstances surrounded his death. <laughs> was he happy when he died? I am incapable of determining that. Also, one thing you'll notice is anytime I use a lever, I have to like hold a button and move the mouse. Can we take a more direct way to the ground team? <laughs> Unfortunately, that's there immersive. Is not a direct route. The base is buried under so, ice. So, how would you feel if you were a triplet space. and your brother, your base. triplet brothers, Similar. went off to become like the captain and chief engineer of a space mission and left you behind? There is more radiation. <laughs> Apparently, really <laughs> lucky. <laughs> left you behind to work at the Sizzler. <laughs> yeah, I also. Suckers, I knew going to college was a bum deal. I know it's at least a military thing, but I would assume that it would also be a thing in like space agencies that you don't put people related by blood on the same ship i'm you know i wonder if uh if mark kelly and scott kelly were ever on a mission together i don't know i, I mean never since pearl harbor when those like five brothers on the same ship died that's been military policy yeah i wonder because like because yeah both of them were both of them were military uh were military before they became astronauts because it feels like, especially when one is command crew, it feels like there's potential for both mundane and uh, egregious problems. Especially in a, a, a mission like this. So much tragedy. Like, what are the odds that Dan McLean is still sane? Okay, what are their chances of survival here? Oxygen, the food stores, waste management. Everything seems to be in order. Are they drowning in urine, Tom? <laughs> what? How did they fix it? They transitioned over to a sustainable small artificial huh. ecosystem a year ago. Growing Good for them. Vegetables. It helps boost morale, amongst other things. The crew members could hypothetically survive here for their whole lifetimes. <laughs> However short they may be, well, yeah. not being an AI like myself. Actually, yeah, that's so a good By point. definition, they will survive their whole lifetimes? Yeah, ma many people survive their whole lifetimes. In fact, everybody does. Although some people never truly live. <laughs> oh. That was unnecessary. <laughs> Well, time to use the big dumb magnet that's apparently <laughs> one one hundredth of a single Turing test. <laughs> Good thing we have so much heavy industrial equipment around to make these tests. <laughs> this was considered a form of therapy for the head engineer. <laughs> Tom, try to try to pass this. <laughs> I want to see if robots can do it. Uh, there is a point in here where uh, where Ava asks him that. <laughs> asks him how he would solve a problem. We already went over this time. <laughs> also, oh, this is a minor okay. gripe, but the speed of the, that catwalk spinning around seemed dangerous. <laughs> I think it's just because this game is not equipped for my mouse sensitivity. I could give all of you wild motion sickness with the motion blur here if I used my trackball to its full effectiveness. Oh, you, you play first-person shooters with a trackball? 
That's, yeah, that's nuts. yeah, since since twenty, I don't know, probably twenty two two thousand nine, I think. I got the same. I got a Logitech Trackman. I'm just saying. I counted like four OSHA violations so far. Four. I'm pretty sure you could count the number of things that aren't. <laughs> it really depends on how dangerous those uh, power balls are. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> you need a specialized gun to pick up the power Mr. balls. The These are radioactive. I am the ISA's feet and hands. You're saying you can only enter Just this base via sawn-off shotgun? Make it inappropriate for the ISA to directly interface with the mission director. What? Inappropriate. As my AI core is stationed on Europa, I can make decisions instantly. Well, so the thing is that it's uh, it's an hour of transit for them to send a message. Like you got to okay, yeah, but that's you got to consider the speed of light is the is the deal there. Well, sure, but like you know, sure, that's in an emergency situation. Obviously, an hour downtime is not uh, that bad, but on like a day to day basis, it's not that bad. <laughs> Especially, definitely not to be uninvolved. Just indicating there that uh, bo that the batteries are al also facilitate the put uh, box on button puzzle. That yeah. is a staple of modern uh, puzzlers. Do you think Half Life did it first? Uh, with the seesaw puzzles, probably. How does I guess I guess in terms of a real physics system? engine. When they can't communicate with us. <laughs> Probably, because back then, uh, Gordon Freeman looked like a box of cereal. His name is Michael. <laughs> the ISA uses. He can't help you with broad shoulders for a scientist. Before they upload them to myself. There is a simulation of this mission on Earth, running Kick -ass at all beard, though. to check my expert systems. Naturally, as any modern artificial intelligence running on a quantum computer. I do also have a lot The line feels really stilted. Algorithms at my disposal. Yeah. However, naturally, like anything in the future. For general use in the mission. Oh, that, that <laughs> yes, is it, weird. It, it, it is the future now. <laughs> Messy, unpredictable solutions. I, I think it falls under the same uh, narrative qualities as that whole uh, having been orphaned at a young age. <laughs> yeah. Fair. To be fair, Tom probably wrote those. <laughs> Maybe. I guess he's probably the one who changed McLean's... Oh, I don't know, maybe McLean changed his objectives to secret. Having been orphaned at a young age. I wonder if they did that before things went to shit. That would be like the worst and scariest thing to be a crew member looking at the captain's <laughs> condition thing there. <laughs> what do you mean your orders are classified? So one thing I'll also we point, have to eat lunch together. <laughs> one thing I'll also point out is when we were on the ship, um, the only pod that we couldn't find uh, was Dan McLean's, and we did find one pod that just had a mystery crew member that that just said pod failed on May twelfth. Ah. Uh. Oh, maybe it's Dan so. and Chris pulling a like Freaky Friday or something. <laughs> Have you ever seen Freaky Friday? <laughs> no. <laughs> I have not. They pulled the Vulcan. I'm honestly they curious if, the if it Freaky is what Friday. you think it is. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I have never seen Freaky that, Friday. Oh yeah, also this puzzle introduces us to a new like a new extra mechanic here. Uh, so anytime you see these circular receptors, we cannot put the batteries in them. Only uh, power balls? Yeah. But you cool. don't need to because they already have their own battery, essentially, so far, right? Well, so in that case, we had to put them in. Uh, okay. <laughs> um. <laughs> run! Run! <laughs> you could make it. Oh, if you move too fast, then it notices... Yeah, it's a the motion tracker will set uh, the motion tracker is connected to a voltage inverter, I guess. What? Okay, no, that that's not a puzzle. That's no that's robot insulting. can solve this, Kevin. <laughs> well, so this is one of the extra puzzles. Uh, all of the things we see in here. They put bonus puzzles into their Turing test. 
Yeah, well, because these are all for just extra stuff, like this one. Although, uh, hypothetically, that would be one of the best ways to slow them down if you're trying to keep the robot out. I'm not. Promise. <laughs> This is such a lazy Turing test. I hate the chatbot. <laughs> you have failed. <laughs> anyway, no, no matter what I type, it's just typing this. And now the terminal is not escaping, so I'm going to hit escape here. Jump scare? <laughs> Robot! Okay. So yeah, that's the counter-Turing test where the computer convinces you that you are the computer. <laughs> also, just they are convincing. Off the... So this does have one thing that we will see later in the game, which is that hard light bridge. Did the ISA cool. build you, Tom? Aperture brand hard that's light bridge projector. I have been given authority aboard this station. I what a good use for hard light, light technology. And the Ashiyama Corporation, designed in California, assembled in China. Ah, if things are different. This time you need stuff unpowered. Myself. But you yeah, need to be us to they're introducing us to voltage inverters. Wait, could you have taken Again, the power I thing? Was that wall open? Test, uh, you if you take it through when you go through the when you go through the blue beams, it clears out your inventory. In the original uh, okay. Test, a human judge has two conversations, one with a machine and one with another human. They then judge which of these polite conversations is with a machine and which is with a human. The machine being tested is said to have passed the Turing test. If the judge cannot reliably tell which conversation... Also, you notice that Tom's voice like gets more echoey depending on the space we're in? Do you think you'd pass the Turing test? Huh. I am quite capable of polite conversation. Stop avoiding the question, Tom. So is that the Turing test or a Turing test? I think that's the one proposed by Alan Turing, because that, because people, people have, uh, we we have created chatbots that can pass that can pass the original definition of the Turing test, um, just by, I think the one that passed, uh, because it just has to convince like thirty five percent of the judges that it's human, huh. right? And the I one that, the one that passed did so by saying, "Sorry, I I uh like English is my second language," right. And so now we're trying okay. to figure out a better way to assess, uh, to to assess how to assess what makes a a machine more capable of like, I don't know, what's a better de de determinator for machine sentience? Makes sense. It's fairly easy to lie, or to appear you were lying. Yeah, and I, well, also just like the the basic idea is like, oh, it, it's one of those things like when we made like like chess computers, like oh, it, it in order for, like you can't play chess without human creativity. So if we make a computer that plays chess, that will demonstrate that a computer is creative. It's like no, turns out chess is like can be mathematically solved. <laughs> the yeah, and computers are extremely good at math. Researchers claim it does not correctly test a machine's ability to think. Ah, a capacitor. Rather, its ability to deceive. What do you mean? Well, have you heard of the Chinese room thought experiment? Uh, no. The Chinese room. Imagine you are in a room. In this room, you are He'll explain for you. Sentences through okay. A the wall. Inside the room is an instruction book written in English. This instruction book tells you which Chinese words to pass back through the slot in the wall as a response. By doing so, you have a conversation in Chinese. In the Chinese room, because the responses you pass back through the door are the correct responses, the person on the other side of the door is convinced 
You are a native Chinese speaker. Well, they're wrong. Perhaps they are not wrong. Because with the instruction book, you are having a conversation. But the person stuck in the Chinese room is not aware of the conversation's content. Also, you can only have a preset conversation, not a, a fluid one. Well, so he's, he's simplifying it. The idea is if you made... While the computer has no idea that a conversation has taken place. What if both of the so, people passing Chinese also, words are reading from instruction books? So the idea behind the Chinese room is take it take a chatbot that would pass the Turing test and then give that chatbot's instructions to a person and put them inside of put them inside of a box and then have them write stuff back. Like the, the have I have whatever the chatbot's algorithm is for responding to questions written in English. The Chinese room. Right. Go you would go back that. to them. I could peer inside the okay. databases at any time, Tom. Or pause your operation. Do not assume I could not do the same to you. Oh. Well, I guess we did threaten so, him first. <laughs> so now we're introduced <laughs> Let's to have these, a look inside. Now we're introduced to these beams that we have to open up to pass things through. I want to see somebody create a um create a neural network that's designed to solve this game. <laughs> <laughs> that would be pretty good. They created that neural network that can play Mario. Yeah, actually, uh, I think that was by Seth Bling. By um, who? who is also uh, also runs the uh, the Super Mario World Any Percent category. Huh. And well, I guess has, he'd know. Hmm? What? I, I guess he would know. Yeah. <laughs> so so he wanted to uh, show that his accomplishments w could be duplicated. No, he just wanted to make a neural network and see how well see how well he could make a neural network that learn that could learn how to play Mario. Um, Technically, that... he's now responsible for the most speed runs. <laughs> Does that count as a tool assisted speed run? <laughs> well, none of them have passed. Like this it, they all the get stuck works. somewhere. It looks abandoned. Huh. Water closet. Uh, we can't get into Daniel McLean's office. But there was a post-it note. And a picture. Yeah, well, there's there's the picture. There's, like, his certificate of for the mission in there. We'll see that in the other crew quarters that we can get into. Why is he in the <laughs> turlet? <laughs> Damn it, get out of the turlet, robot. Anyway, there's a lot of things we can look at in here. Uh. Uh, oddly, like some of these, some of the pictures of the crew look weirdly photoshopped. When like you could have just taken a photo of the person. Hey, yeah. he's a Toronto Maple Leafs fan. I'm sure they were born in Canada. He's a big fan of Gerard. You know, and he's that, a fan that, of Earth. That famous hockey man from the 23rd century. Interesting that the one on his desk only had two of them as a kid. We don't talk about Robert. Look, here's one. Here's well, there's, a puck there's three by... in that one, but the first one had two. Ah, yes, Bolney. He was very lucky to get a Bolney puck. Okay, so we're going to see this in every crew in every crew quarters. This is uh, listed as a uh, medication to prevent like to prevent headaches from uh, harsh light exposure. Ah. Nice. Oh, oh no! A falling out. H e a. I don't. I. I, I don't hey, know. Look at that geode. Hell. Might be. Drawing reports. Oh yeah, there's a geode there. Somehow I missed that in the two times I played this game. And a baseball oh, bat. So was that him or was that just a bed? Uh, that was just a bed. Okay. It's just, it's another thing showing off. So we see the, the, this... the difference here between him and Sarah is Sarah's beds made and it's just strange thermals. Uh, Sarah's beds made, all of her pencils are, are clearly organized. She's got this, I don't know, it looks like a gas sensor. Boop, boop. It's I would guess that that's a picture. I would guess that that's Minos Brook.
Because he's a golden Who's lab. It? No, that's the wrong guy. Never mind. Oh, yeah, possibly. I did it again. Telomere is highly important. To this game or in general? Uh, both. <laughs> like the shovel mounted on her wall. Yeah, we're going to see those all over the place. So you know, I'm reminded I decided to transfer my thoughts to text. I want to do so in the form of a history lesson, a lesson that you'll find condescending, but it's more likely for my sake than yours. Alan Turing is considered the father of theoretical computer science and artificial intelligence. Perhaps a lesser known part of his life was his contributions to the field of biology. Why do you suppose his interest lay in these two disparate fields? I assume it's because he believed his world to be logical and understandable. As a mathematician, he seemed to believe that the great complexity of the universe could ex be explained by simple rules. Two years before his suicide in 1952, Alan Turing develop something called the reaction diffusion systems inside the academic world this work is more cited than his work on computers it can generally be formalized as this equation differential d d differential deviation with respect to q of i don't know most of the rest of these symbols i didn't get that far in math <laughs> I'm no mathematician, however, in plain English, this describes things as the wish to diffuse, however, also react with each other during the process. Uh, I'm sure this sounds strange to you, or at least tangential to our lives here on Europa. What relevance does it have to anything here? Reaction diffusion systems show how patterns are created. They show how the leopard got its spots, how the zebra got its stripes, etc., etc. Turing created the question, can a machine impersonate a human? The intrigue behind that being, can the human mind be simulated by a machine? Why is this question to prove that the human mind is a machine? I am not hurt about Turing's opinion, however, concerning consciousness, he states this. According to the most extreme form of this view, the only way that one could be sure that a machine thinks is to be that machine and feel itself thinking. One could describe these feelings to the world, but of course, no one would be justified in taking any notice. Likewise, according to this, the only way to know what a man thinks is to be that particular man. If the human mind exists within the physical world, it obeys the same rules of physics and chemistry as any other thing. Therefore, like all of nature, it is merely reactionary. It is curious that what nature would create. Through the mechanics of determinism, creatures that... Uh, feel like they have free will. Conversely, I suppose if we conclude that we are all machines, we came to this conclusion in a predetermined manner. We cannot claim credit for our discovery as it is just a product of nature's genius, not our own. A humbling idea, I think. Behaviorism. Perhaps we are more similar than we think. And here's a picture of a flower. <laughs> you know, like you do. What a nice flower. That is an uncomfortably airport uh, sign system. <laughs> so yeah. that, that was a really strange conclusion for someone who's Catholic to come to. Uh, also, this is a bottle of morphine, but anytime I pick the bottle up, it just becomes clear. Huh. Uh, this is paint. Uh, you might recognize yep. this painting if you're familiar with the next Rembrandt. Sure is a Rembrandt. So the thing is, so this is not actually a painting that Rembrandt made. This is a painting that was created by a team of uh, artificial intelligence researchers who created like a learning algorithm to uh, to study Rembrandt's paintings and create a painting that was based on the based on similar features that were in his paintings. Well, at huh. least he's not making Dungeon Siege movies anymore. <laughs> Uh, one of the other things that's really that's also really cool about the next Rembrandt is it actually has the texture of a painting because they uh, they also studied like the texture of paint and had it had figured out how the pigments would have gone on with a brush and they 3D printed the painting layer by layer. Yeah, uh, it's got a thermos shaped like a bullet because it's named after a gun. <laughs> Mass hysteria. Cats and dogs living together. Tom was not comfortable with my attempts to disturb the implant. Hmm. I'm gonna try some shock therapy. Oh, Tom told on him. I don't know what that what that other word says. I do not read Russian. It's got narc algorithms. <laughs> 
distinctly different from narco algorithms. I imagine it's a it's a curse word. <laughs> Probably. Uh, any so of our complete. any of our Russian speaking viewers go translate that. Tell us what it means. That looks yeah, sure. uh, translating that Cyrillic looks especially hard at this resolution. Yeah, and well, so the thing is, this is loading in. Uh, there's one of these PDFs we're one of these PDAs we are not going to be able to read because it just never loaded the textures in. <laughs> Tom is very angry. He gets angry, Tom. He tells he tells me everybody else is bad for me. Only he loves me. Huh. I am going to attempt an excision. Tom put his cigarette out on my shoulder today. Uh, also, Mikhail lost his uh, hand uh, doing self-surgery. <laughs> Tom is very angry now. The crew refused to talk to me. Sarah patched me up. So, also hmm. we did see that in the in the crew profiles, uh, Mikhail's mission was also listed as terminated. God damn you, Tom. Hmm. Yeah. Trying to keep this out of the eyes of Tom. That didn't go so well in the 2001 A Space Odyssey. <laughs> also, he should It'll not... It'll be fine. ...not be using a... ...tablet. <laughs> Oh, Chris is on my side. Yeah. Well, so, I mean, he, he, I don't think he cares too much about, like, how he puts text down, because as far as he's concerned, Tom is inside his brain. That's true. He's not 100% wrong. Hmm. So he believes he is both infected with the symbiote and with a... And has been implanted with a computer. Uh, once we get to Soichi's room, that the the symbiote thing will make more sense. Does he dumb it down for us? <laughs> uh, kind it's of. It's a symbiote. Actually. That, that's I will say that this. That I will he... say that this. Uh, this game taught me the meaning of the word senescence. What's what's happening to his hand in that picture? Yeah. Oh, okay. uh, oh he's he's got his the arms other hand. folded. It also looks <laughs> like they photoshopped Soichi's face into uh, like a stock photo. I think that's exactly <laughs> what happened. It's just weird that like you could have taken a picture. Yeah. You it must have been possible to get a picture of a real actor. You could have found a woman and put her in a picture. He's also photoshopped into that. <laughs> yeah, that's probably the same stock photo series. <laughs> like, the lighting is all wrong. Also, it's the same face, I think. <laughs> I'd like to think that's not a game design thing, and he actually photoshopped himself into these pictures. Also, he's a <laughs> he's, he's an enthusiast of uh, knockoff uh, Swiss, chrono uh, Swiss chronometers. Ah, a violin shortcut to culture. We found an extreme file. It's an organism that survives extreme doses of radiation. Radiation damages DNA. The extreme file has a virus living inside of it. The extreme file scavenges DNA from other organisms, which the virus uses to repair the extreme file's damaged DNA. Essentially, they work together to repair the uh, to survive in what I'm calling a symbiotic relationship. In some ways, it's an immortal relationship. Uh, doesn't seem to age biologically. Aging and death are ultimately caused by DNA damage. If we have the ability to fix our DNA. But that's limited. This organism can repair damage caused by massive doses of radiation. If we could harness this power, we could eliminate biological aging, what is called senescence. Okay, so it's basically immortality. Uh, yeah. I mean, not from trauma, but from aging. Yeah. Right. Well, sure. It stops that's the telomere snipping. Yeah. That's the only immortality that matters. Like, we'll never be indestructible. Right. 
And then the other PDA over here, which I try to get to load, which I can't load. Uh, basically, he's got a conversation going with the ISA that says, uh, we've done tests on plants and things are living much longer than they should have been able to. Um, hmm. And uh, we're out of other things to test. We're going to test it on ourselves. This story continued in John Boyce's 17776. <laughs> <laughs> And then I'm going backwards through here because I forgot where I was. That's reasonable. Yeah, the, it all kind of looks the same. Anyway, next time. I'm not convinced I'm human anymore. None of us are. Uva Bowl is. <laughs> I don't think Uva Bowl cares, though. Anyway, good night. <laughs> good night. <laughs> <laughs>